Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order on April 1st. Uh, Miami Township Trustees. I'd uh, entertain a motion for adoption of the minutes of March 18th. So moved. A second. Any corrections? Any? No, sir. No. I, uh, I confirmed that you spelled barrier correctly. I looked it up. So did I. Uh, can we call a roll? It's been moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of March 18th, 2024, as presented. Um, Mr. Moocher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Allister? Yes. Uh, entertain a motion to approve payment of bills in the total of $50,601.06 from the general fund, $7,786.90 from the fire fund, $38,579.40 from EMS, $128.48 Cemetery, $136 Road, $3,970.28. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? No. I, I, I think that was two payrolls in that last one. Because I'm in the what the... You mean in the road? But no, last I thought fire. I, maybe I'm... No, the big thing on fire that really ramped that up is eighteen hundred dollars for SCBA tests and basically fifty seven hundred dollars to start with in truck repairs. So those are obviously not normal costs or annual costs yeah. and other. So that's why that number looks so bad. Yeah, I'm um, ahead of myself. I guess January has three. Pay I mean, April has three paydays, but we're not to the end of April yet. Are we? Uh, any other comments, questions? No. You call the roll, please. It's been moved and seconded to approve payment of bills in the total of $50,601.06 as enumerated. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion to approve. Uh, correspondence. Are there items in this? I don't want to read them all off. Items that should go onto the agenda. Uh, let's, under new business, uh, make reference to the Chamber of Commerce request uh, that we consider being a sponsor to the lunch local. Um, I don't have any, any other. Thing. Nothing's jumped out at me. Okay. Well, again, this is not a joke. We have a new fiscal officer. And as is the custom, you get to swear. All right. <laughs> and I get you to raise your right hand and and I'll repeat after me. I, Jenna Gunderklein, do solemnly swear. I, Jenna Gunderklein, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of fiscal officer in Greene County, State of Ohio, uh, fiscal officer, Miami Township, in Greene County, State of Ohio, during my continuance in office. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of fiscal officer in Miami Township, Greene County, State of Ohio, during my continuance in office. And then I will sign that you did swear. Okay. Yay. In 24 years, we'll have a retirement program. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Fire department 
report. Okay, so since our last meeting, we had 36 EMS calls, nine fire. Uh, we, uh, oh, I put that, no, I'm sorry, we, we requested not receive, that's, a, that's incorrect. Um, two mutual aid, uh, both fire related. Uh, tomorrow, if you haven't heard, the weather is going to be pretty crappy. Um, it's changed substantially this afternoon, so the EOC is going to be partially activated for the county tomorrow. Um, I'm going to bring additional couple of people in um, to, to upstaff. Uh, the bulk of the uh, bad weather is supposed to be from 1500 to midnight, um, so I've got extra coming in at 4. Or I'm sorry, at uh, 1400. Uh, Engine 82 repairs, it's still out uh, at the uh, service center in Springboro. The brakes, exhaust uh, fluids, and one of the, an additional pump valve has been rebuilt. They're currently working on the pump transfer case, and that's uh, the last thing that they need to do, so we should have that back here, hopefully in a couple more days. Um, they haven't found anything else on our repair list need so fingers crossed that that continues to be the case um, there are some um, uh, pressure gauges in that that need to be replaced still yet but uh, in an effort to get it back in service they'll come back here and those will be done on site that's pretty straightforward to do uh, just a little bit update on eclipse stuff um, i will finalize um, some parking restrictions with uh, police chief tomorrow uh, we're basically looking at limiting some parking spaces on Zini Avenue, Dayton Street, and a couple other places that are a little more narrow um, to just kind of try and help out some with that. Uh, as I mentioned before, we will be restructuring transports uh, primarily to GMH except for very protocol specific uh, types of calls to reduce our time out of the, uh, the township. Yeah, just uh, to clarify, GMH is... Green. Green Memorial Hospital. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just always used to that. <laughs> right off the top. Um, Friday, we had our ISO survey that went uh, better than I expected, which is always nice. Um, they definitely have streamlined that process uh, rather significantly and also uh, made it a little more realistic. Um, you know, some piece of equipment that nobody ever carries on their fire trucks. They've said, we're not going to double check and see if that's on your trucks anymore because we realize it's silly. Um, I won't get the results back from that. Uh, it'll take about six months. Um, so Again, um, what's ISO stand? So it's Insurance Service Organization. Uh, it's a division of a group that's called Vera Risk and you're assigned a score from them that determines your uh, rate that affects commercial occupancies and occasionally um, uh, some residential. Um, our big thing with that and where we really saw improvements were some of the key changes with dispatch, um, which is great because those were always things that we had absolutely no control over. I don't know the total points on those yet, but he was uh, he was saying it would it would be pretty significant, so that's that's great, especially when it's something we have no control over. How does that score affect us at all? I, to be honest with you, I can't give you that answer because it's all proprietary, so they don't share that with us. It's just you know then whatever insurance company then turns around and goes oh okay well that's that score so we've got some table internally that's used to determine that value. So that's so. That doesn't directly affect us. It ex affects people who have insurance in the township. Yes. Okay. Primarily commercial, but occasionally there. Sometimes it affects residential. Um, BWC grant stuff. You know, Cassie's been real aggressive about our BWC stuff. So the the first grant that we applied for for that, which was for all the P the the PPA, which were gloves and and hoods and that. Those are in. We actually got the turnout gear in. Uh, turnout gear dryer in last week, which was about two and a half weeks early for than we were anticipating. So the next thing for that is actually getting it, uh, an exhaust pipe to it so it can exhaust that humidified air out to the, uh, to the bays. Uh, and then the last thing we've got to do is turn the paperwork shows we've proved we paid for it. Um, so we're moving along with that. Um, that's actually all I have for reports.
other questions? No. Although there are two resolutions. So <clears throat> the first resolution, I'm not sure what the number actually is on that, is uh, the one that impacts Georgia, um, six, uh, 16. Um, and I'm proposing that we move uh, Georgia into the position of acting lieutenant. Uh, Jason Paletti has resigned uh, a full-time position that that goes into effect on the 7th for him. Uh, that'll be his last day. Um, so I'm proposing that we move Georgia into that position um, and because that is a pension eligible position that she would uh, become a pension pensionable in full-time employee. That also moves her to a 216, or I'm sorry, 212 total hours in a work period, which means she doesn't get any uh, overtime unless she's over 212 hours. And that moves her to a 2448. Correct. Yep. She would be the C shift staff person or supervisor. Well, let me read this resolution. Resolution 2024-16, reclassification of MTFR employee. Whereas the continuing need exists to maintain proper staffing within the fire rescue department whereas vacancies currently exist or will exist within the fire rescue department for the full-time pension position of acting lieutenant, and whereas current part-time employee Georgia Gold meets or will meet all the necessary qualifications to serve in the capacity of acting lieutenant, and whereas Denny Powell has recommended the appointment of this candidate, and whereas funds are available for this purpose within the fire department's 2024 operating budget, now, therefore, it be resolved that Georgia Goad shall be appointed to the full-time position of acting lieutenant effective Saturday, April 6, 2024, with a $1 per hour pay increase. So moved. I second that. Any discussion? I'm just glad to have um, her signed on before she um, sought um, employment elsewhere, and I'm glad to have her in that leadership position, and I'm glad to have another full-time paramedic. Anything else? No. So we need to call the roll. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2024-16, reclassification of a Miami Township Fire and Rescue employee, Georgia Go. Mr. Mutter? Yes. Ms. Meyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Resolution is uh, As far as uh, Resolution 17, um, I definitely feel that this is a more appropriate thing to go in the executive session, not necessarily this evening, but in, in you know, at a uh, different, at a determined time. Point. How do others feel? Um, well, executive session is, I had notes prepared, but um, I could wait for an executive session. Um, it's a lot to discuss in one night. Um, I don't sure. know that the details need to be in executive session. Um, um, I mean, I appreciate the Uh, I don't know if everyone had a chance to look at the chart that Denny provided, you know, estimates of uh, how this pension expansion or addition would affect our money, uh, but I haven't really processed it yet. So I'd be comfortable with waiting. Chris, do you care if we discuss it at all? Or? No. Danny, will this? Um, I, I mean, I'd be well, happy I'd, to wait. I, I'd like to say a few things. One is I've had a chance to call four different departments to see what their requirements were for um, bringing some of the pension. I really feel like three at one time is a huge, a huge budgetary leap for us, and we don't have a. Um, 
treasurer. We don't have a township administrator. So, and my seventh grade math is pretty good, but that, that's what we're going on. I, I determined maybe $177,000 unencumbered in our payroll, about 50 to 80. Wait, wait, that, that we're, we have during the course of this year. Yeah, if, if my calculations, if my calculations are right, that's a big if. Mm -hmm. Calculated that 50 to 80, Thousand, if we're going to um, acquire at least purchase fire engine in coming years, we need 50 or 80 percent of that. Um, so just saying that, I'm not clear that any of us know that we could take a leap of three putting three people in the pension right now. We, we could, that's something we could discuss in an executive session. Um, Sugar Creek Township says that I'd just like to say this: the people that are suggested of moving into full-time are all EMTs, and we appreciate you very much. Sugar Creek requires paramedic for, to, to, to be put in the pension because paramedics are so so valued, and so everyone is valued, but as it, as it is my understanding to be an optimal department, we would invest our full-time pension people to be paramedics. Saying that, I realize there's a real crunch in the market. And so Sugar Creek requires paramedics. Um, Beaver Creek Township, they're advertising now paramedic preferred um, because of the, the crunch. In Jasper, um, they're still paramedic preferred to be put in the pension, although they're, they're leaning a little bit because there's such a need. Um, so they're, they're kicking around maybe making people probationary. You get two years to become a paramedic if you're signed a contract, but then it opens issues of, um, you know, have it, having that contract. Um, if there's tuition assistance, having um, a, a contract that says if, if we help to, and I think that has been our practice to tuition assistance. I don't know if that's in the policy anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Um, <clears throat> Two years for a paramedic. So I don't know if we've ever had any contract that says if, if we support you, which I, I think we really should support people in this kind of environment, the kind of things that t fire departments are facing now, these acute shortages, that we should really support people. But at the same time, there should, and I, you, may, you may have already had this a commitment if we help you through, there's a, a two-year commitment or so back to us mm -hmm. to stay with us. Um, yeah, I <clears throat> I agree that you know we've had that philosophy for a considerable period of time. The challenge for that now is there's basically ten thousand dollars that is available for that, and that's basically what it's costing to put somebody through a paramedic program. So that does create um, an issue in terms of. How would you decide who gets paid first, and how does that agreement affect, say, the person that we decide we're going to pay for, and we table somebody for the following year? And I, I don't have a good answer to that. When you say we have ten thousand dollars, there it exists someone. And it's in the training budget. Oh, it's in the training budget. Mm -hmm. okay. I hear two threads here that may be confusing. One is the support for the tuition, and the other is if you get uh, paid for training, you commit to serving here two more years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, is that? That's what's in policy. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so then I, then I wonder, not only do I wonder, can we afford to bring three people up now? It's a, it's open question, but then, those are three positions we have that are not open to a fully trained paramedic. You know, it'd be like taking our whole our whole ball of wax and come back and closing up. So the way our the way our scheduling is done, there's always um, there's always already a paramedic on who is scheduled on staff, unless it happens to be somebody takes off, in which case we try and make sure that we cover that paramedic. 
Um, we do definitely have some cost overruns. You know, for example, on B shift, it's pretty common for us to have three paramedics at a time, and you know that's costing us, let's say, thirteen dollars an hour additional that we wouldn't necessarily have to pay for if we only had one paramedic on. And then, of is course, that not, doesn't. Is it not preferable to have two paramedics on a run? No, I'm not saying that it's not preferable, but I'm simply saying as a cost-saving venture because the budget is our biggest concern um, that we are still able to provide advanced life support care but still be cost effective in terms of being you know uh, keeping our payroll costs in line as much as is controllable additionally this moves uh you know if if we move these people into full time they no longer are 100 out 106 hour employees for their work period they're now 212 hours so if you look in the spreadsheet that you guys today, that is roughly, you know, it's a substantial amount of savings that we would not necessarily be paying. I thought it was 106 for two weeks or 212 for four weeks. Yes. That, it's 212. Their oh, work period is four yeah. weeks. Yeah, not two. So then it's 212 hours. So any two, as long as they're not over 212 hours in that month, they, they don't get any overtime. So, you know, just for example, of the three people that I proposed putting in the pension, they have made almost $4,900 amongst the three of them in overtime. If they were in the pension, they would not have received any of that overtime. None of it? You're, None you're, of it. you're sure of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. How, how can you be sure that they... I looked at, I looked at each, uh, each uh, work period during that. During He's talking first about the quarter. first quarter of 2024, not hypothetically yeah. what could happen. Right. And Strictly then, real numbers. And then there, we have two paramedics and staff that you're not considering for promotion. Correct. Mm -hmm. And you say you, that's a personal choice and not much documentation of... I've shared that and my opinion on that with all three of you individually. Well, that's a question. Does that legally cover us? I don't know. Um, but I'll leave that. I'll let that go. Um, sign Could I build on something you just said? Yeah, I think I'm done. Uh, I was just wanted. To, I just want to get some of the issues out on the table so we don't start at square one when we have our executive session. Um, so there are some shifts where there are there are occasions when there are three. Paramedics. That's a regular occurrence. That's not an occasion. Uh, Three paramedics. And one. sometimes one paramedic. Always one. Always at least one. Yeah. Uh, are there services that we can't provide if you only have one paramedic on a run? It's not ideal to necessarily run a cardiac arrest with only one paramedic. Um, it, it's a much more realistic option to say it'd be nice to have at least two, maybe three. Um, but given the scope of practice with basic EMTs, there are enhanced things that a basic EMT can do when, when well trained and tested, which they all meet, um, to allow them to do skills that traditionally were a paramedic person's skill, such as advanced airway, and that kind of thing, which frees the paramedic up to do things that are paramedic only skills. But obviously, if you have a circumstance in which you have two or three additional paramedics, then the cardiac arrest can move more smoothly. Um, I would say that, honestly, in my experience, that's really pretty much the only time in which you see that. Um, Perhaps a car accident with multiple injuries? No, because trauma is really all about basic life support care, not advanced life support skills don't generally save the trauma patient's life. It's basic skills. I'm, I'm watching the faces of our firefighters back here. I have two comments when yeah. you're ready. I probably said a hundred times, so 101, what the heck. <laughs> I feel like since I've been in office, uh, I've always prioritized personnel over shiny equipment. And this is no 
this is no exception to that. And number two is with the uh, reduction of uh, one full-time um, employee last year who was pensioned and at the rate that his pension was, I'm thinking that might closely cover two, two pensioners of the levels that we're speaking of. That is included in the spreadsheet, but I forget this. So the, that person that you're referring to, his pension was around 20,800 and some dollars if memory suits me. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the pensionable amount for the three that I'm proposing one is like ninety-eight hundred dollars. The other one, the other two, were around eighty-three hundred dollars. I'm sorry, I didn't print that spreadsheet out in front of me. So there is savings in in that, mm -hmm. um, and that is included in the calculation on the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. With all due respect, I don't see that as a really a savings because to me that's off the table. That's something we had to do to to get our our ship righted and I don't I never intention I, I at least I never had the intention that we were going to take that and 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 do do that with it. I I, I don't look at it as a savings, I, I look at it differently, but that's just my opinion. Well that's like saying that everything we saved on on payroll and, and benefits doesn't really matter, you know. It doesn't save us any money. I I mean I understand where Maryland is coming from, um, you know, and I, I think that her and I can definitely agree on that. Uh, I'm not sure that I would necessarily say that 100% of Collins' salary and benefits is savable. Should the vast majority of it be saved? Yes. But, you know, we've talked at nauseum about the staffing crisis that is in I'm not saying savable, I'm saying moving to priority yeah. items. Yeah, I understand what And that. for me, personnel, mm -hmm. saving personnel, not saving money, <laughs> mm -hmm. is, yeah. is my priority. Yeah. That's all I have. Mm -hmm. So any further discussion or we just move into it? I would like to, uh, well, we can have an executive session, but perhaps in two weeks. I I I feel the need to uh, to process this information longer. I don't want to do it tonight. Neither do I. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that's on our agenda for two weeks from now. But Danny, thank you for. The detail. Anything else on fire and rescue? Uh, not I. I had a brief conversation with Colin at the beginning of last week, and he promised that he would get with Frank Cook, our friend. I can update that too. Okay, go for it. So uh, Colin did speak to uh, Chief Cook, and Chief Cook uh, told him that I would have the draft within one to two days, or not days, one to two weeks. And that was, that conversation occurred on Friday. Um, my intention would add some context here. This is uh, an evaluation that was done of the fire department. Well, it's still underway, but largely done last year, just the organizational performance and operations. He told Colin that we are pushing around 150 plus pages in our report at this point. So much of what we're talking, what they were supposed to report to us on, one of the things is staffing mm -hmm. and what the smartest move is and other things we've talked about too. So, mm -hmm. right. um, yeah, crossing my fingers about the quality of the report and you know, it's months and months overdue, and mm -hmm. it, it raises, it yeah, raises Frank, doubts for me. Our chief, chief Cook readily admitted that they are do not have enough assessors at this point, and have um, the demand for their services has expanded quite substantially. 
And so they they have actually proposed that the executive committee for the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association Act actually look at hiring some additional surveyors to relieve their workload. Well, just for a point of interest, um, I did review our payment for the work, oh, and good. we have not paid anything at all. It's zero amount. Oh, we haven't yet. The proposal states that it's payment due on demand, and just to make double sure, I reviewed every invoice for the last 14 months, and we haven't we haven't issued an invoice to to them for 14 months. So. Uh, we're going to hold that when we receive it, the final final version anyway. So that is twenty-four thousand dollars we didn't account for in our budgeting. Hmm. But that comes out of the general fund too, not the fire fund. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for the ever exciting cemetery? Yes. Let's move on to the ever exciting cemetery road report. Which actually are two different reports. So the interim cemetery section again has uh, to report that we have uh, I got this right. We've had one barrel and Glen Forest. I'm not sure exactly which section. Uh, so four, five graves all of the natural burial sections, either the prairie or the oak grove, uh, over the last two weeks. And are in the process of planting oak trees in the new oak grove section. We have five to put in. Uh, we've put in two at this point. And looking at meteorological information, <laughs> it might be a couple of days before we uh, before we get the other get the other three in the ground, but that is moving along. Um, so we planted five. We planted five. We planted two. We we have three more to put in. A total of five, and that's just for um, either cremains or full bodies that have been in the ground for over a year. Okay. And uh, uh, next year, I would expect probably at least that many. Go in. Just based on what was done last year and then how it's breaking up down into cremains versus full body. I, I never expected, frankly, I never expected that many cremains to go in the ground. I mean, the whole idea was the theory of, you know, your body disintegrates and helps, you know, grow the tree. Well, cremains don't do that, <laughs> other than maybe, yeah. Uh, a little potassium or something like that, ash or whatever. But anyway, so that's that. Uh, the okay. We have also uh, uh, turned on the water in the uh, natural burial area and turned down the fountain, uh, the water fountain, the water feature in the natural burial area, and it is working just like brand new, which is good because it is brand new. Uh, we've uh, cleaned up and mulched the memorial scattering gardens. Our memorial scattering garden and the fountain garden, if you want to call it, what's on the other side. And we do expect a scattering in the very near future, so I want to get that looking a little bit better. It was kind of weather worn from the winter, uh, so it looks nice. Um, road, road report uh, old Brandon's still plugging along. Um, he's uh, He's doing a myriad of little things, so uh, replacing old signs and uh, I guess I can now remember all the stuff. Uh, still cleaning up limbs from the cemetery. We're still hoping to uh, contract with uh, tree person, tree surgeon, uh, and have all the damaged limbs and brushes that's in the Glen Forest East section along the tree line uh, that came down in our last storm. Hopefully, like, well, if we get more in the next couple days, that'll give them a little more work to do, more, I guess. I don't know. Um, but uh, that's yet to be cleaned up, and there's some other areas that need, need a little attention to that, that we'll get that done also. And that's give or take it. 
Can I ask a question about planting of the trees? I just wondered, do, do we do that in-house and just as well as we think we can do it, or do we? Yes. Do we know what it takes to have a tree survive and yes. do those things? Just Google it at least and do the best. Our tree at the entrance has survived around True. two years. True. And it is growing like a weed, or at least like that a looks, swamp white great. oak. Same, same actually for the fire station trees. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll look good. Yeah, we'll we'll find all those to ourselves. Yeah. So. Well, I'm looking at my calendar and I didn't write it down, but I believe on the 10th, County Engineer's Office uh, is hosting an early morning program on road herbicides, roadside herbicides. Uh, and I'm interested in going that to that. I wonder if Dan or Brandon would. I would doubt they'd have much interest because we use no herbicides in Miami Township. <laughs> Let's say that again. We use no herbicides in Miami Township. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going out of general interest. Okay. Uh, I, and I didn't realize that we used no herbicide. That's great. Huh? Anything else on roads? Well, fiscal's officer, fiscal officer's report. Mm -hmm. Did she have it? I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> oh, well, you, you have any uh, uh, emergency appropriations? I don't know. We have, we got one piece of information that's our fund status and it's full, man. The taxes just came in and we're. Right, the easy life right now, but I don't, we didn't get the appropriations and the revenues, but I'll assume that everything's copacetic. Gene, is that um, correct? Um, I think it's copacetic. We are in full transition and it's not a, 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 a clean cut, um, so there's definitely still some, of course, uh, you know, overlap um, between Margaret still doing some things. For showing me, me doing some things on my own, and we'll, we'll get it all squared away. One big thing is an audit coming up, so it's, it's not yeah, an easy which thing. is the two years that she was doing it, so that will fall on her, um, and she's planning on sticking around for that. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome. Anything else for the fiscal officer? Not I. Zoning inspector's report. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so my March report had uh, 19 calls that came in, uh, 45 emails that were received or sent. I issued one road work permit, and Dan had, was back and was able to sign off on that. I received two new BZA cases for April's meeting. Um, my summary of work met with Emily Tyree regarding a road work permit, met with Home Family Stakeholders Group regarding land availability, met with Marilyn uh, regarding zoning inspector job description, met with Township Landowner two times regarding some land uses for his property, um, went to Green County Regional Planning to sign off on a replat, met with Green County Regional Planning uh, Taylor Bear uh, this past week for a zoning inspector's quarterly meeting. Uh, met with the BZA for one meeting. We had a variance for a lot split, which was approved, and a variance for frontage on a private road, which was also approved. Um, so that will add to, once those are completed, that's going to add to single family dwellings in the township. Um, met with the zoning commission one meeting uh, where they did send a motion to send two text amendments to Green County Regional Planning, uh, one for self generation solar, and one for temporary exceptions. Um, met with Mr. and Mrs. Nelson regarding their approved BZA variance uh, to give them next steps and to sign off on the variance approval letter. And they also wrote a letter to Faith Morgan because there were some conditions attached to her variance and um, I'm waiting for that to be signed and returned to me. And then Miami Township Trustees meeting tonight. What, what are the up to the minute report there? <laughs> yes. What are the two? Uh, New issues going to the BCA. Uh, one is for the Chappelle shows. Uh, they want to do, yes. do that again. Mm -hmm. 
and the other one is uh, for a variance to move a non-conforming structure. It's non-conforming. Te technically, under general provisions, you would not move that. It has to do with the use. The use is not is grandfathered in, so it becomes a bit problematic, and they want to move it slightly to another area of their property because they're expanding on their house. Are you saying they have an accessory dwelling that was grandfathered in? Yes. And now they... So they want to move it. But they it, want to move it. But it's a non-conforming structure. I mean, yeah. it doesn't yeah. conform to our code mm -hmm. because we don't have that use right now. So they're coming for a variance to that. Mm -hmm. That's April 17th, was it? Uh, yes. Wednesday? That's a Wednesday night. Yes, so the Zoning Commission April 16th? Yes. Even then yeah. April 17th? Yeah. No, trustee Zoning Commission. Yes, it's going to be the April 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 April. that week. Yeah, that was, it was either the 17th or the 22nd, and the 20, 17th was, I could get everybody there. We've also had, um, you guys may know some information. We've had trouble contacting one of our museum members. Jeff Garrison is not um, responding by email or Yes, and one of the BCA members gave me some diff a handful of different phone numbers, and I tried all of them, and they were disconnected. So for the last BCA hearing, he, he didn't show our report, and for this one, he's not available. Either. I've been, not, and I've been, I've sent numerous emails to BCA, and it, it's not rejected. It doesn't come back as undeliverable, but we're getting no response. Uh, <clears throat> I'll talk to you about that and try to follow up physically. Okay. Because it is house. Um, no, I don't have it. I'm good at finding locations. Okay. Fine. Uh, we do have, uh, we have published a job description for the new zoning inspector and we have an applicant who is present. Um, and we would like to interview Terry Smith uh, after we... In executive uh, session. Yeah, in, in executive session. So I'll make that motion that we move to executive session. Um, well, there are, there's one item I was gonna bring up for new business the Chamber of Commerce. We've got this under. I know. Oh, we don't. We work but in terms of okay, allowing others to public waiting around. Of I mean, the, the serious item of do we want to sponsor, be a sponsor? I don't have the Chamber letter. Can I? Can one of you grab that? Is that all right if we go ahead with that and then come back to the interview? Makes sense. Makes sense. Doesn't that all make people wait? Yeah. Go home. Uh, I don't remember which day it is, but once a month the chamber sponsors. Uh, it's kind of a social time for chamber members. Uh, has anyone been to that? Years ago. Not recently. This time. Well, this is. This time it's this is a new version of what's been done in the past. This time it's at the Lynn's Cafe, so that's what you're interested in. <laughs> case I'm Do you remember what the cycle is? Is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't give a lot of information, especially how much money they're looking for, so I don't know. Well, then let's just. What are they asking us to sponsor? Uh, secure your sponsorship for 2024. Oh, that would be a specific uh, lunch, I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I should have looked more closely at this before getting, asking to talk about it. Let's wait till next meeting. Any other old or new business before we go into executive session? I don't. Okay. Um, I'm curious, did we have 
Did we put the draft of minutes out so that Greg could read it? I didn't this time. I was out of town. My apologies. I did for two. You got it anyway? I, the young lady talk. over there allowed me to read her copy. Okay. Well, we, I, I couldn't find it on the website. It, right, we, 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 we'll, we'll get there. Um, but also, I couldn't find on your calendar that you were meeting today. The only thing on the calendar for April is the zoning. Uh, okay. But you felt confident in our okay. pattern. It's on your show website. Side. You meet the first and third yeah. Monday, so okay. I took a chance. Right. But I it was I'm also on, in the Yellow Springs news. I am trying to honor your continual nudging of our being more and more. And this Probably. is exactly the kind of thing. You wanted done when you got elected, and that's what I wanted six years ago. And we we do steps. Marilyn's been really good about keeping the website stuff updated. I just know yeah. there there was discussion about whether we were considering Easter a holiday that affected the township or not. Um, yeah, that's probably actually what yeah. happened. And no excuse. I was out of town for nine days, but my computer comes with me out of town, so there's really no excuse for not having that. But so I have moved, moved for a motion. I have made a motion to move into executive session for matters of personnel. And I'll second it. And I'd like to invite Denise to be with us. Sure. So this is uh, the personnel being uh, possible. And Tony Inspector. To be um, and, <laughs> and let's all in favor. Say aye. 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 